So Fez is one of my favorite indie games from back during sort of the heyday of the uh, Xbox Live Arcade indie revolution. Um, I 100%ed this game, except for the one, I think there was one puzzle that like no one ever solved ever. Uh, so I didn't get that one, but I basically 100%ed the game. Um, cracked the entire like transliteration code, made myself a t-shirt that said Fez in Fez language. Uh, I was a Fez weirdo. Um, but it's been years since I've even attempted to play it. So since it's free on the Epic Store this week, uh, I figured I would give it a try. The whole thing has got this, like, creepy sense of weight to it. It's like it's got all these whimsical... Uh, let's see, start a new game. That's okay. I only just barely started to make sure the game worked. Uh, it's weird. Like, it's got this whimsical look on the surface. But now and then, you'll get this very, like bassy music and big intimidating images and black screens like showing the depth of space and you can so you get the sense that there's this whimsy on the surface but this like incredible depth and foreboding to this game so it's like it's amazing how they're able to give it so much weight despite the fact you're just a little dude with an oblong head running around getting behind things playing on your drums and going out your door. Uh, up to enter a door. Ooh, looks like I can't use the stick that way. I gotta use the D-pad. All right, cool. I've forgotten a lot about this game. Oh, it's, it's the old pirate. Every town's gotta have their old pirate. So many little, little people. So adorable. Am I just, am I falling down the stairs? Oh, something is. Let's go to the mailbox. Is this is this the mailbox? Dear Gomez, please meet me at Top of Village. I have something very important to tell you. Today is special day, geezer. All right. So there's little children here. Use RS to look around and press it to snap back. Press B to talk to villagers. Oh, hey, hello, little child. I could run around all day. In fact, I will. Gomez! Gomez! Hi, Gomez. I'm Gomez, by the way. Oh, I forgot I could cling to things in this game. Hello, bird. You can't talk to birds. What's your favorite shape? Mine is square, not cube, that's for sure. Because there is no such thing. Oh wait, so I can open and enter a door. I am kind of a uh, completionist when it comes to games like this. I feel like I have to go inside every orifice of every building. Like, can I go in there? No, I am, disappoint. Well, let's climb a ladder. Doop -doo -doop. So, so far, to the uninitiated, this game feels like it's just a adorable little side-scroller full of cute little characters like this girl. I love village. I lived here my whole life. Cool. Oh, nope, I can't go that high. Oh, but I can climb vines. That's right. I forgot that was a thing. Do you want to go over here? Let's open the door. Oh, man. Guy's not here. Ah, well. Gotta keep climbing. There's so many things that are, like, tantalizingly out of reach in this game. So you'll notice I can climb around to the edge of something and climb up and down it like that or climb it this way. The game already starts to feel a little bit 3D even though it's uh, officially right now 2D. Oh, it's the school. Hello. There are no such things as devil squares. Only regular squares. Okay. Good to know. Okay, so I think I can jump over here and then up here. 
Talk to Captain Monocle. Hello. You're looking nice and flat today. Yep, there sure is no... Oh, no! Cool. So I thought I could walk across that, but clearly I cannot. Let's go inside. <gasps> it's the kitchen! Yay! Nothing to do. Okay. Hmm. I seem to have a problem. Can't go any higher. Oh, wait, I could. How did I do that differently? So if I just jump like this, I can't reach it. But if I push up, I can climb up. I'm kind of surprised that wasn't clearly tutorialized to me just now, but I figured it out. Here's the mailbox, and here's the dude. Hello, dude. Today is a special day. Adventure is ready. It's Gomez time. Huh? Any time now. Just you wait. Oh, there you go. What is this? What is this thing? I like that it's like, it's vector graphics. And it's a higher resolution than anything in Gomez's world. It's like completely outside his understanding. And actually, almost the weird way that you're outside it and inside it at the same time, it kind of almost feels like a tesseract to me as a three, as a denizen of the 3D world. Okay, so that text is English transliterated. You have to figure out, like, you, like I actually managed to do the cryptography. <laughs> that like, I, I, I've never done anything like that for a game before, but I was so into Fez when it first came out, I actually figured out that text. I've got a file lying around somewhere where I've got an actual, like, transliteration. I would love to, I should track that thing down. I don't know where I kept it. Uh, but I should track that thing down and see if I can read this dialogue. I would love to know what it says. Yeah, well, I'm not going to understand it now. Oh, no. Oh, no. What is going to happen to me? What? Everything is rotating! Ah! It, whenever anything's weir anything weird is happening, it happens at a higher resolution than Gomez Gomez's native resolution, which is cool. It does make you feel like you're just you're out of your element, you know. Ah! Sky laser to my head. Oh my goodness! Here comes the source of my of the name of the game. <laughs> It is the Fez. So Cloudcraft is saying that he never finished this game and that, oh, look at the joy on that character's face. So Cloudcraft is saying that, that he, uh, he never uh, completed this game. And I disagree with you that it was, so he says, ah, oh, it wasn't worth it. I didn't need to finish it. I'm like, I disagree with you. Um, not that you should have completed it. You can do whatever you want. I am really happy that I 100%ed this game when it was brand new. Uh, it was totally worth it. So, I'm in this 2D world, but if I push the triggers, I can rotate it and break reality. And now all of these little fragments are, are, are everywhere and, and there's distortion and mess. It's always kind of risky to artistically decide to make your game look broken. Uh, <laughs> Cause, yeah. And we start with the logo again. Ooh, and they even added in the people who did the port. Interesting. So, beats and buttons, this is Fez. Uh, it's an older game, it came out years ago, but uh, I was a massive fan of it at the time. And so since it's free on the Epic Store this weekend, I thought I'd come in and uh, check it out again. So I wake up like before, except I've got a Fez on. So now the same setting 
is visible in 3D. My world is much more complex now. So, Gomez, something went wrong. I need your help. I was sent to guide you. I am Dot. The hexahedron has been fragmented, shattered and scattered all over the world. You must restore it. Without it, everything will collapse. You have received a gift. A great secret has been revealed to you. There is a world beyond your village and dimensions beyond the ones you occupy. I do like this idea. Oh, this door leads to the outside world, but for now is sealed shut. The marking on it indicates it won't open until you have collected at least one cube. There are many such doors in the world, each requiring more cubes than the last. To reach the end of this journey, you will need to find all 32 cubes. But first, you must leave this place. Look a cube. There are eight cube bits in this village, like this one right here. Together, they'll form a full cube, which you can use to unseal the door. Find them! <laughs> so, quick recap. Shiny golden cubes, very important. Gotta find them all, or else the universe collapses with you in it. No pressure! And remember, use RT and LT to change your perspective. Now get going! Well, let's get this first one, obviously. Yay! So, Beats and Buttons, I got I saw your tweet about wanting to uh, see more of Last Day in June. And I've got, I've got a weird little quandary there, because... I do I did like the game and I wanted to come back to it but at the same time if I play through the entire game on a stream I'm sort of uh, giving away the whole thing <laughs> and uh, and not giving people a motivation to check the game out themselves and you know and pay the creators so maybe I'll do another session I don't I don't want to go all the way through the game though I kind of want to leave some unplayed like I felt really guilty when I did my firewatch uh, series where I basically played through the entire game of firewatch um, and kind of removed the need for, for, for a lot of people to try it out. Luckily, no one watches my stream, so uh, except for you know a handful of wonderful people, and so it doesn't make that much of a difference. So maybe it's okay, maybe, maybe it won't be a big deal. Um, I have been thinking, I'm really excited about the game Control, which is about to come out next week. I have been thinking I might try to play a bunch of that on the stream, so who knows, maybe, maybe my rules will end up being flexible. We'll have to see. Anyway, uh, so I can rotate around like this, see my village from all these different angles now. And so whenever I am in a particular perspective, the game acts like it's 2D. Like even though you can see there is some depth to this box and the, t and the little uh, house that I'm next to and the wall, the stone wall behind it, the game acts like They're all sort of 2D, uh, 2D side scroller flat stuff, and like this, it acts like they're all in the same plane. But then when I rotate it, I'm way the crap over here, or way over here. And so there are so many puzzles in this game that are just about figuring out how to flip around and get where you need to go. So I didn't even really need that bridge. <laughs> At least not that part of it. Oh, so there's something right here. Interestingly, I can control Gomez with the left stick, but I can't use the left stick to go inside a door. I like how when I look at a door, it tells me where the door is going to take me. So I don't have to take it if, I, uh, if it's the wrong one. <laughs> Plus, there's the eye thing. I kind of I like the uh, the attitude in the writing. It's very sort of self-knowing, self-referential. So I've got to find all eight of these pieces. Let's see. Some of them might be hiding. I don't remember very much about this game. Yep, some of them are inside houses. There we go. Hey, there's a treasure chest. 
how do I get to the treasure chest? Like that! A treasure chest! To open it, face it from the front and press X. <laughs> Yay, a key! You have found a key! Keys can open any locked door, but it can only be used once. Yeah, so you see, the, the puzzles in this game are just so... It's just... It's not that they are individually brilliant, it's the idea behind them that's brilliant. No other game before Fez had done this kind of nonsense, as far as I was aware, anyway. So like, for instance, these stair steps are totally accessible from this angle. But from other angles, they're really, really far away from each other. But since they line up in this dimension, I can use them to climb to the top. All right, so I've got four of these. I need to find that locked door. That probably contains something I want. Yeah, so I can jump down like that. That's good. Is this a door I've already gone in? It's hard to keep track. So inside the houses, yeah, okay. I can still rotate inside the houses too, which uh, I might have already missed some opportunities there. Hope I didn't miss anything too valuable. What's this place? Oh, I've already been here. So it's really interesting, like, say I walk around here and I switch back, the game still has this concept that I am behind the tree well, when I've just switched over to it. But then somehow when I move, okay, I'm still on that side of it, but then I go in front of the tree and now I'm here. If you just think about that for a second, like how freaking complicated <laughs> is that problem to solve logically? to make it so that the character always looks like they're in exactly the right place. For your expectations, but just as needed, he happens to be forward or back. Like edging just a little bit forward, step by step. Still there, still there. So he stays there as I'm going to the left. But then as I come, start coming back to the right, suddenly he snaps forward. And it's only when I rotate it again that he snapped forward. And he actually kind of did it imperfectly. Like I had never actually noticed the imperfections until I started looking at it really closely. But basically it just, it just leaves him at whatever plane he's in until there's a reason not to, until he crosses where he should be in front of something. Then he snaps and changes position. Oh, there's the locked door. Let's go in there. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, Clocker points out that because this game has a perspectiveless 3D, like, you know, a lot of 3D rendering has perspective where you, things that are closer to you are bigger, things that are, uh, you know, are far from you are smaller. And you think that's just natural, that's how the world works. But when you're simulating 3D on a flat screen with a computer, you don't have to make it work the way that it works in real life. You can do whatever you want. And so you can do 3D without perspective. And that's what this game is doing. So that things as they get further away from you, they don't get smaller. So normal under normal conditions, those snaps where, where Fez is in the background and then he walks into something and it snaps him into the foreground so he can walk in front of it. Uh, you don't notice it happening most of the time because there's no difference in size between Fez behind something and Fez in front of something. I mean, sorry, Gomez behind something in Gomez. I keep wanting to call him Fez because that's what I thought his name was uh, during all of the pre-release hype of this game. And so, and he's wearing a Fez. It just seems like it makes sense. Got some kind of map. He found a treasure map. A map of what? To where? I don't know. Figure it out yourself. So yeah, I remember this room being important. 
and the information that's up on this wall meant something to me. Also that information, and that information, and these letters. These are, these are letters, I believe. This is a word right here. <laughs> like, all of this means something. Though, actually, wait a minute, I think some of these are letters and some of these symbols are something else. Like these three over here, they might be something else. It's been so long since I decoded all of this stuff that I've now forgotten most of everything, which means I could figure out again if I wanted to. Or not. Hmm. Oh, Beats and Buttons points out the little big planet actually gives you, because it came out after this, it gives you apparently some uh, ability to do some of these same kinds of tricks. Interesting. Okay, so I gotta find more pieces. Where have I not been? So I went in here and I got a piece. I think there's nothing. <laughs> I love the digestive tract. I think there's nothing in here. Oh wait, is this? That looks kind of like it might be a map of where the cubes are, but that wouldn't make any sense. These people don't know where the cubes are. Yeah, uh, Cloudcraft points out that decoding the numbers isn't that hard in context, but decoding the letters is really hard. And I am very proud <laughs> of the fact that I actually, because like, most of the time I don't take the time that it would take to try to um, do something like that in the game. Like usually I'm perfectly happy to let people who have more time in their lives um, figure this stuff out. But I think, I think when Fez came out, I might have only had one child uh, and I had more time on my hands. And, um, and it was just such an interesting problem. And the idea of solving it myself was so interesting to me that I actually pulled it off. And I actually spent, I mean, it took a lot of time, but I actually took the time that it took to, uh, to work it out on my own. And I think what it was, I think I just found, I found some really long passages uh, that included a lot of words and, um, and identified some short words, things like the and 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 stuff like that. And with those, and, and then and then use those same translations of transliterations of those letters, and put them into other words, longer words, to see if that made sense. And so once I had had sort of figured out, okay, if and is this, and the is this, and an is this, and of is this, the other words start they kind of make sense. You don't put word, letters next to each other that are never next to each other. Then I would keep going and try to decode other words, and I kept confirming what I already had learned from previous uh, from previous attempts. And eventually it all turned into a completed transliterated alphabet. Okay, so there's one more. And this is, this is the downside of this game is when you don't know where the last thing is. It can take a while. And this was actually kind of similar to the experience I had with Hyperlight Drifter, which is another game that I almost 100%ed. Okay, so there's nothing here. But yeah, Hyperlight Drifter is another game where it's just full of secrets. You can practically beat the game and not find anywhere near all the secrets. So where have I not been? Have I, have I, have I been to this house yet? I'm not sure. But yeah, but it was a similar experience where I was like, once I, once I understood. Oh, what's this? Ha <laughs> ha! Down there. <gasps> Yay! Yeah. What? Once I understood the uh, the scope of the secrets and just how much there was to discover. I was kind of inspired by it. I was kind of like, there's some games where it's like, yeah, the game is about one thing, and also there's a bunch of secrets to get. And you're like, oh, okay, I'll get as many as I can, but whatever. But this game and Hyperlight Drafter both feel like they are actually about the secrets. Like they, they introduce a world that seems simple and flat at first, but then the more you explore, the more you realize how intricate it is. And that there's like a history behind it, as like a, a, a sort of a, a sense of a sense of mythology and weight and depth to it, 
and it makes you want to find the secrets. It's not like, you know, oh, find the 100 collectible, uh, you know, audio cassettes or something like that. It's like you feel like if you find all the secrets, you're actually going to be learning more about the world and becoming more familiar with this place that's kind of sucked you in. And so, yeah, so for me, it's a very rare game that actually makes me want to do that kind of labor. But uh, this, this was one of them, and Hyperlight Drifter was the other. I, I don't know if I can think of a third game I've done that with. Actually, I tried to with Far Cry 2, and then a, uh, a bug denied me the, uh, the achievement for finding all the diamonds. And it made me sad. Okay, I've already been in there. The problem is I can't remember where I've been. So I keep going back and checking places. That one didn't give me... There we go. That one didn't give me the little... Um, you know, the cube, the cube silhouette that appears to show you where something leads. That one didn't have it. I think that means that I hadn't been there before. See that? Yeah, that little cube silhouette that appears. When that doesn't appear, it's a door you haven't been through yet. So that's a good thing to notice about the UX. Well, Cloudcraft, um, you know, because Cloudcraft is talking right now in the chat about how, um, you know, this game sort of tipped over the edge into frustrating for him and he didn't complete it. Um, I'm just happy to know that there's such a thing as a game that I complete that you don't. Uh, because so, so often... The other scenario is the story where I'm like, oh, I'm so impatient and bored and I can't, I can't complete this game. And you're like, no, 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 Jeffrey, you got to keep playing it because it's awesome. And you're like, I played through every little part of this and I understand it so deeply and I've unlocked all the secrets. And I'm like, really? This game is not grabbing me. You're like, no, 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 play it further, Jeffrey. And so I'm kind of happy to have the shoe on the other foot right now where this is a game that I've just plumbed the depths of and absolutely love. And you're like, nope, I got bored. See you later. All right, let's go through here. <laughs> hey, listen. I know this is your first time outside the village, so if you get lost, you can use the world map. Press back to bring up the world map. It's not, I guess, yeah, on this controller, it is still called back. I got an old Xbox 360 controller. So, right? Holy crap. So, this is my village. And you can see it's, it marks all the places where there are still secrets that I have not yet found. So I think when something becomes gold, that means that I have maximized it. I've done everything there I can. When something still has a question mark on it, that means there's something there I need to learn or get or whatever. I don't know if it puts question marks in areas like, for, like these things. I don't know if there's an item for me to get here. I think that there might just be information on the walls that I need to use. And so it's gonna keep the question mark until I solve whatever puzzle it's tied into. That's how I think it works, but I'm not dead certain about that. Anyway, so you can see that there's the new area I've just entered and it connects to another new area over here and it connects in that direction if I can find it. Let's see here. So uh, you know, Cloudcraft said it's the ending of this game that drove him mad. And for me, I don't... One of the best things about being me is that my memory is terrible. And I very quickly forget the endings to games. I just beat Outer Wilds like a month ago. No idea how it ended. Completely forgot. I was listening to the uh, to Kotaku's podcast about it. And they were all talking about the ending, how much they love the ending. And I realized I don't remember the ending. And I just played this game. So I can play it again. And I could learn the whole ending again from scratch and just have a novel experience, and it'd be great. Similarly, I forgot everything about how Fez ended. No! Let's just pretend that didn't happen. This game doesn't have a perfect jump, but it's pretty good compared to some of the competition. So, yeah, I love these things with the floating platforms line up differently depending on what your orientation is. Oh. So, one thing about this game is it gives me vertigo. Not not vertigo like um, I'm disoriented and dizzy. It gives me vertigo like I feel like I'm about to fall off a cliff while I'm playing it. Don't fall down because of that. Okay, thanks. Um...
Aha! I have two! <laughs> uh, I just noticed that Brant came into the chat a while ago and called me a giant nerd. Uh, well, you know. You're the one wearing glasses today, Brant. Because this is the 1980s and people who wear glasses are nerds. Uh... Do, do, do. Okay, so anyway. So this is like a central hub area where I can get to a whole bunch of different places if I can just get enough stuff. So one thing I really like about, you know, this game, it, uh, it has an old school vibe to it, um, you know, but it's doing fairly modern things like right here, helpfully lighting up the number of, uh, of, of cubes that you already have to tell you how close you are to opening this door. That's the kind of thing that, like, back in the old school, like, Metroid days or whatever, little helps like that were, were kind of not that common. Uh, it's a pretty modern thing to, to, to just put so many little hints and make things respond to you, even if they're not quite ready to, uh, to do what they're supposed to do. And so I, I like seeing, you know, modern sensibilities, like, wending their way into games that feel old-fashioned in their presentation. Oh, if I press Y, I'll bring up the inventory which keeps track of stuff I've found. Like, oh, look at that. And I already know how to navigate it because I already rotate the world using these same controls. So I've got a treasure map that tells me something. I've got two cubes. I've got nothing right here. And I've got no artifacts. Cool. Ah, whoa. All right. Hey, Zarnathium's here. Zarnathium, Zarnathium says, I'm the opposite. I'll remember something like it was yesterday when it's three years ago, making it hard to keep track of time-related things. Somebody asked me how long I lived where I am at, and, they, and I think, oh, like three or five years, but it's been over ten. Yeah, so I very frequently will go somewhere like a coffee shop, or I'll come to work, and so, like I'll sit down next to uh, like Krista, and she'll be like, uh, hey, how was your weekend, Jeffrey? And I'll be like, I can't remember that far back. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, literally, like, I changed context one time. Went from home to work, and I have forgotten everything that happened at home, and I am only, I only have work brain. That's how bad my memory is. And I can eventually think back to what I did that weekend, but it, I don't have quick and easy access to it. Okay, so I want to see how that played out in the map. So, yeah, so I just moved. I entered a door, and I think I went from here to here. So I basically went into a new level and then immediately left it. Oh, and you can see on the map that there's stuff to find in, in this place. It's got this, uh, you see, to the right of that cube, you've got a little uh, purple doorway, which I think represents the, the doorway that's, re that's uh, in the middle of the picture there. So there's a puzzle with that that I got to solve, and there's a bunch of cubes there. Same here, and some kind of mystery, and a locked door. So when I'm sort of, when I've explored a lot, and I'm sort of lost, I'm like, okay, I've got an extra key, and I haven't found a lock for it yet, I can find, I can search the map for locked doors without having to walk from place to place, which again is a nice modern convenience that a game that's as old as the art style of this game wants it to look um, probably would not have given us. What's this thing? I think I remember these things being important. Completely forgot why. No memory of what that was about. Man, it is great to be me. And just be able to enjoy a game forever. Hey, have I already got a key? I do. I already have a key. By the way, when you have keys that are versatile and that can... Like, like any key can unlock any door, but the key goes away. It is so hard not to ruin your game with that. That is a very difficult thing to put in your game. They've done it here, and you know, this game is all about intricate puzzles, but it's so easy to like set it up so that you can unlock every door you have access to, and you don't have quite, you, and you don't have enough keys to unlock the le next door, but that next door has got the key behind it that you need. 
Because, it, it, yeah, because if you can do it, the unlock the doors in any order, it's possible for the player to come up with an order that runs them out of keys. And so this game, I don't think, has that problem, but it was probably difficult to, to make sure to avoid it. Yes, just barely. So I think part of what Cloudcraft might have found frustrating is that I, I remember there being um, some issues in this game where a jump, like, like when they would put a jump at sort of your maximum reach, uh, it could be really difficult. Is this where I came from? I think it is. It could sometimes be difficult to make the jump. Uh, like it, it would look like you could just barely make it and you wouldn't be sure and you would miss it, but you wouldn't be sure if you missed it because you just failed that one time or because it really is out of reach. Uh, but luckily, uh, the penalty for falling in this game is actually pretty low. You just kind of pop back to where you were. <laughs> Cloudcraft, I do remember that uh, we're playing Cultist Simulator this coming Monday uh, at 12 o'clock. I've got it on my calendar here at work, so I'm not going to be able to forget. Cloudcraft, started, Cloudcraft and I have a plan to play Cultist Simulator together on this stream uh, on Monday. But... Now that I'm talking so much about how bad I am about remembering, he's getting anxious and I'm going to forget it. Okay, so I think... So what? Is this something I want to do? Mm. Can I... Is this okay? Is, is, is being in the water fine? I don't know if being in the water is fine. Hey, notice those, uh, those Tetris pieces in the skybox. We saw pictures of those same Tetris pieces on a wall inside uh, one of the buildings in my village. I wonder if that means something. Everything in this game means something. Okay, so I'm, I don't think I can get to the top of the lighthouse yet. I haven't figured out how to do it, so I'm just gonna go back to this other level. Oh, Cloudcraft uh, just remembered that apparently there are some items that are actually hidden, like far out in the water, and you have to know where to swim. So that's cool. Uh, let's go in this door. Looks like there's a cube piece. Oh, a couple of cube pieces still here. Oh wow, so this this level leads to a lot of other places. Any door could lead anywhere, which is actually kind of, it's a little bit of a problem in the game because you know, when any door could lead literally anywhere, um, it's hard to really identify the difference between an important door and a not important door. This is where I just came from, right? This, this door, so I don't need to. So I wanna get on top of this. I remember these, Okay, these towers with the little, te little tetroids, what are those things called? <laughs> Tetrominoes on them? Uh, this, it's, it's stacked up tetrominoes. I feel like there might have been meaning to that at some point, but I forgot what it was. Okay, so can I get to this other place? Looks like maybe not, and oh, good. I'm glad I can jump out of the water. That's nice. But I can't, can I get, oh, hey, I can get up here. Cool. I assumed I wasn't gonna be able to do that. What's this guy doing? What's that, what's that bomb up there? I don't remember having bombs in this game. Check this out! It's a bomb! You can pick and throw bombs by pressing X, but be careful. You can also drop a bomb gently by pressing down an X. Okay, what do I want to do with a... Aha, uh -huh, wait a minute. Oh. Cool. All right. Oh my gosh. See, this game is just like... Okay, I just noticed that there's a, uh, a cube on top of that monolith that I feel like I should be able to reach. 
And I don't want to leave this level to go to some other complicated level until after I've grabbed it. Because then I'm going to forget it exists. Whee! Whoa! Whoa! See, that, like, that gave me vertigo, him <laughs> stumbling right there. This game, more than most games, makes me, like, tense up. Um, because, because my character is on the verge of falling. It's like, it's jumps like that where sometimes you're like, is that, is that real? Am I supposed to be able to make that jump? Okay, it looks like I can't get to the top of this, but there might be another access from the top down that could get me there. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that one. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything here. I think they deliberately try to place the, um, a lot of the cubes in spots where you can see them from every angle, so you know, so you have like motivation to go a particular place. Yes. <laughs> Beats and Buttons says that he has an unrealistic fear of video game water, and he kind of keeps expecting it to come and get me. Okay, so I can't make that. Watch this. I can climb straight up and down this, like it doesn't have a giant overhang. So I like how they managed to make falling a thing you can't just use. So, so falling isn't punishing. They don't kill you when you fall, but it's still a barrier to exploration uh, because they pop you back to the last safe place you were at. You can't just fall down forever onto things that you, that you want to uh, find. It just occurred to me. Is this thing finite or does it loop? Is that where I came from down there? Did I? Oh, weird. Okay. What's this? Oh, look. It's a little gate. They can take you back to the closest warp gate. But they only work one way. Well, let's see what happens. So Cloudcraft confirms that, yeah, that, that level loops, which is just weird and hilarious. Oh. Hey, oh, that's what this was. Okay, cool. And now I can get a bunch of stuff I couldn't get before. Is there anything else I need to see here? Nope. Did I? I don't think I did. Let's go in here. I imagine that might take me to that bell tower in the distance. Yup. Beats and Buttons points out that he can see letters in the landscape. Yeah, this game is just full of like coded messages everywhere. I also, I like the little pulses that the, uh, the cubes you can't see will give off. Those little, the little pulses that, I don't know, they're, they, they really kind of catch your eye and they make you feel like, you know, that, that feeling you get when you notice a collectible you hadn't noticed before, that little <gasps> collectible, like they give you that pretty hardcore. Oh, hey, yeah, we can open that door with four. That's true. So this bell has got four symbols on it. Ding dong. Ring the bell by pressing X in front of it. Dong. I'm pretty sure at some point I learned what this meant and what it was for. Right now, I've got no idea, but whatever. Yeah, this is one jump where I'm like, can I make it? Oh, yes. I'm just 
feeling my body revolt against jumping like that. Cloudcraft says you almost did it, actually. Um, I don't know if he's referring to the bell or something else I did earlier. Okay, yeah, the bell. Did, did I almost get it right? How do you remember? I had no idea what the bell was for. I completely forgot. Nope! Whatever. So you don't have perfect air control in this game. You've got a little tiny bit. Like if I'm jumping straight, like say, say I jump right when I hit the edge of the door. I land right there. If I turn back, I land right there. But I can't turn around midair. I can't, I can't take off at a flying leap and then exert enough force midair to recover from it completely. So it's different from some games that give you just sort of maximum air control. This one gives you some so that you can... I think that might be where that vertiginous feeling comes from with me because I can control him just enough that I feel like I should be able to do something but I can't control him as much as I've come to expect from, say, Mario. And so he starts to feel like he's careening out of control while he's jumping towards something. Oh, Cloudcrap. Cloudcrap, how do you remember the numbers? Cloudcrap says that he knows which order to ring the, uh, the sides of the bell in because he remembers the numbers. How do you... How? Uh, I wonder what this means. Oh, hold on. Can I can I pick these up? All right. So I think I need to arrange this. So that so that the images on the sides are all accurate. So like, for instance, maybe that's correct, but that's not. That's correct. That's not, okay, so this one has to be on the other side. Can I, can, how do I pick up one that's already stacked? Have I just ruined it? Okay, so I can I can move it. What happens if I just shove really hard? There we go. And then get this guy up here. No, not like that. So I think I've got that set down gently button, right? It's like that. Oh, but now I've ruined everything. Okay, cool. There we go. We did it. And got a... What is... What are you? A blue cube? You have found your first anti-cube. For every cube, there is an anti-cube. A negative for every positive. Anti-cubes are much harder to find than regular cubes. So I have to use the anti-cubes to get to even deeper secrets. And this game just keeps on getting more complicated. <laughs> okay, so Cloudcraft, yeah, I, I could not let go of the challenge of the anti-cubes. I think that might have been the difference between our playthroughs. Do I have a way up from here? Or do I need to find a different entrance? I, th I think. Hold on. Let's go back over here real quick. If I go up here, and then 
That doesn't make a difference, right? I can, oh yeah, I can just jump up here. Great, time to, uh, ah, oh, I'm gonna die. Okay. Uh. Oh, this game makes me feel like I'm falling all the time. Yay. I don't know if I can make this jump. Ah, I just barely can. Uh, I love how this game treats cubes as a novelty. Like, my little magical friend who follows me around isn't a fairy, it's a cube, which is a similarly mythical creature. I'll see you later, Beats and Buttons. Thanks for joining us. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's much of a point to being up here. Um, now I have to try to get safely down. We, Yay. I appreciate that the fall distance isn't so bad. <laughs> that I just die constantly. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wait, where did I come from? There, that's where I came from. I love how I can see behind me the place I'll go, because because all the doors that you can take, take you deeper, you can see in the background where it is the door's gonna take you. Ah! Oh. Ugh, wow. Oh, Beats and Buttons was going to go watch somebody else and then their laptop crashed. So, sorry about that person who is friends with Beats and Buttons. What is this little island? I actually am running out of time because uh, I've got work stuff i got to do. So, I'm trying to remember. Was there something about the trees that made the trees special? And that's why this area is special? Or was there something about going underwater that I did here? Did I drain the water at some point? I don't remember. This, this area wasn't nothing, but I forgot what it was. Okay, so let me down. So the question is, so I want to get back to that door from, from the beginning that I unlocked. Now I just have to remember how to get there. So that was a dead end so far. That's a, these are all interesting different places that I've been. I haven't been there. That's where I came from. And it's connected straight down. I forgot how I got here. I know it's the world map. Okay. So. So some door here. Takes me back. Oh, there it is. There it is. I think this is the door back to that place. I remember a few times getting lost in some of these areas, not remembering which door led where, or just losing track of a door and not being able to navigate the world. Four. Yes. Let's go inside. Do, do, do. So there's like several different 
you know, kind of very different areas that you end up exploring over the course of this game. I love how something can just seem really simple, and then, nope, it's hiding an entire world underneath it. Actually, this... There's a lot of doors in here. This level's gonna be complicated. Uh, and since I'm running low on time, why don't we just quit here? Everything rotates a cube. This game's got a very unified aesthetic, which uh, I really appreciate. Everything feels like it means something. Anyway, thank you for joining me for this. Uh, so right now, uh, the, the weekend that I am recording this, uh, Fez is free on the Epic Store. So if you, you know, are not one of those folks who's morally opposed to the Epic Store uh, and you're interested in this, go get the game and check it out because uh, I've had a lot of fun with it and I still have lots of really, really fond memories of it. Um, going back to whenever it first came out, which was years and years ago. Anyway, so uh, let's wrap up the YouTube video and uh, get out of here.